Welcome to the first ever episode of Reactor Toots. My name is Peter and I'm going to be taking you through the basics of the program Reactor. Now, Reactor is a modular audio programming environment that allows you to build synth sequencers, samplers, and audio effects from scratch. Um, the program itself comes with a bunch of different instruments for you to play with, and it's a really great tool that was built with both the, pro both the producer and the programmer in mind. So the first thing we're going to do is open up the program itself. And the first thing that I want everybody to do right off the bat is up to the top, you see this little eye. I want everybody to make sure that the eye is engaged. And that's basically going to make learning this program a hundred times easier. All it basically does is allows pop-ups to appear over modules, inputs and outputs, and anything that you don't really know what it is, it'll just tell you right there. So if I mouse over the instrument, it'll give me a little explanation of what it is. Cool. So the second thing we're going to do is hit Command N or Control N, depending on if you're on Windows or not. And that'll bring you to a new instrument and a new ensemble. And then you'll see this thing right here. Now, this is where the instrument GUI is going to be. This is where all the knobs, faders, displays, all the visual feedback is going to be in this view right here. There's nothing in there because we haven't built anything. So if I were to build a knob, just really quickly, you don't have to do this. It'll appear right here. Cool. So if we look to the left, we'll see a sidebar, which basically contains a file browsing system, which allows you to kind of navigate between ensembles, audio files, lots of different things. Uh, it contains snapshots, which are basically presets of the instruments, and then you can add your own by hitting append. Uh, this also, this sidebar also will contain properties of your different modules, so you'll be coming to this thing quite often. It'll also give you explanations as to what the modules are and uh, what macro you're looking at and things like that. You're actually able to go in and edit most of these so if you needed clarification on something for at a later time you can just say you can enter in your own information just saying this is my ensemble cool awesome so to get into the structure view which is where you're going to be building your instrument you basically double click on the panel right here which will bring you inside the instrument view. It may end up bringing you out here, which is the ensemble view. So go ahead and double click the instrument, which will bring you inside the structure view. So to get sound out of the program, basic theory tells us that we need some kind of oscillator if we were to build a synthesizer. So we're gonna right click, go into built-in module, and then mouse over oscillator, and we're greeted with a ton of different options. Uh, uh, all of them are kind of increasing complexity as you go down. Um, but for now, we're just going to go with a basic triangle. Triangle sounds good. And then we get the triangle module right there. If we mouse over it, it'll tell us exactly what it is. Oscillator for triangle singer signal with logarithmic pitch control and linear amplitude modulation. And then we see two inputs and an output. So if we were to hook this up, we'd click the output and attach it to the two outputs here. And we don't hear anything. And that is because there's nothing attached to the inputs. We're not telling the oscillator what, what note to play nor how loud to play it. And if we mouse over these inputs, they'll tell us what kind of value and what kind of range it'll expect. So input for control of the pitch, logarithmic control of the frequency, scale, one semitone per unit. Typical range is zero to 127. So that looks exactly like some kind of MIDI signal would be nice there or some kind of uh, integer. And the A, input for linear amplitude control, the wave format out swings between minus A and plus A. Excellent. Uh, ignore the uh, ring modulation bit for now. So the wave format out swings between minus A and plus A. So that's exactly how loud, um, how loud the waveform is going to play at. One being full scale, and then zero being nothing at all. 
So it's no wonder that we don't hear anything because there's basically amplitude is receiving a zero. It's receiving nothing, so the, so the waveform's not playing at all. So that means we need to tell this oscillator two different pieces of information in order for it to produce sound. We need to tell what kind of pitch to play, typically from 0 to 127, and how loud to play at any number between 0 and 1. So if I were to hook up, let's just say a number, and to a quick shortcut to uh, pick out numbers, Rector defines them as constant. So if you right click on the input and hit create constant, it'll create something right there immediately, which you can actually edit. So if I wanted, say the mini note number instead of C, D, I can double click, bring me into the left, uh, left sidebar and I can enter in the value up here. Hit enter, there we go. So if we wanted to enter our constant in manually, that's easy enough. We just right click, go into built in module under math, constants the first thing there. And since one is going to be full scale, it's going to be extremely loud. So we need probably a fraction of that. So we could just enter in 0 0.02 and we'll be able to hear the oscillator. And this is sweet. We're getting sound, but it, there's no, we have no kind of control over it. It just keeps going and going and going. And that's awful. If we want to be able to play this oscillator on the keyboard, we need to tell the oscillator MIDI information and velocity information. And that's easy enough to do. We just go into built-in module, go into MIDI in because we're looking for MIDI information going into the program. And then note pitch is the very first thing that we see. And if we mouse over that, it'll tell us source for MIDI note on events. The output range is suitable for control logarithmic pitch inputs. Awesome. If we mouse over P again, it says right there it expects some kind of logarithmic control of the frequency. Logarithmic being 0 to 127 as opposed to hertz. And then note pitch gives us a logarithmic control of the pitch, so that's awesome. If we hook that up right there and start playing stuff, obviously nothing happens because the A isn't, we're not giving uh, the amplitude value any kind of value. If I were to hook up the note pitch to the A and start playing something, and we could see we could see what value it's transmitting just by mousing over the wire. So I'm playing uh, D3, which translates to note pitch 50. We would be communicating a message of 50 to the amplitude value, whereas one was full scale, we'd be playing 50 times full scale, which would be extremely loud. I think Reactor will eventually clip out that amplitude, but it'll still be very unpleasant for all of us. So if we right click, go into built-in module, MIDI in, there's something called gate. And gate, if we look at that, it says the source for MIDI note on and note off events. It's a source for MIDI note and note off events, switching the status of a gate output signal. The amplitude is controlled by the on velocity. Perfect. And if we double check, just by double clicking, making sure the function tab is clicked and looking at the range, it goes from zero to one. Excellent. If I wanted the range to go from zero to 10, I could just do that there. And depending on how hard I hit the note will dictate what number it is between zero and 10, but we want from zero to one because that's what the amplitude wants. And if we hook that up and start playing on our MIDI keyboard, we get sound and we get the most basic synthesizer ever. So that's it, tutorial over. Thank you very much for watching and I will upload a second video very shortly.